Hello, thank you for joining me. My name is Susan and I have been a watercolour artist ever since I left art college. I do a lot of teaching for various art societies and I also uh, do lots and lots of commissions. So I'm very happy to be here today to show you an exercise in tonal values. Tone is a very, very important aspect of painting in whatever medium to try and capture. So what I've done first of all, before we actually start to paint a picture, I've actually put together a range of tones called a tonal scale onto the paper. I've used the colour Payne's Grey in a blue shade and it's an SAA colour. It's a lovely, good, rich, deep colour. And I've started on the left hand side here with the paint at its most intense. The next square along on the right side of the first square, I've added a little bit more water. And with each square, I've added more water each time so that it gets paler and paler. This is a very good exercise to do if you choose some of your darkest colours, your strongest colours, and perhaps keep, p keep a handy piece of paper with the scales from dark to light of each one. So I'm going to paint a range of hills using the glazing technique where we let one layer dry before we apply another, a subsequent layer of watercolour. As you can see here, I have drawn a range of mountains. There are three layers of mountain. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up the colour. I'm going to use the same colour as I did the tonal scale and it's the Payne's Grey Blue shade, and I've mixed it to a very liquidy consistency. So if I show you, just on this spare piece of paper here, that's just about right. I would say on our tonal scale, it, it's probably a number five. So it's just one short of the paylist. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to pre-wet the sky area, working from the top down to just the top of the hills. I'm not going to actually paint up right up to the hills. I'm just going to paint a little bit above them, okay? And that will help us move forward a little bit quicker. This is a very good limbering up exercise. Right, that's going to be quite wet, but I'm trying to achieve a lovely wet in wet sky, a real rain wash sky, the sort of sky that you do see in uh, mountain ranges. So. I've got my wash here and I'm just going to touch the paper with the tip of the brush and as you can see I'm going to produce a lovely wet in wet rain soaked sky leaving perhaps a little bit of light coming through just quite broad strokes you don't need to be too too specific about it I'm just going to add a little bit of water to that just to push it back a little bit I'm also going to take, remove some of the sky colour with a piece of cotton wool. It's a makeup remover pad actually, but I quite like these because you don't have too much spare bits of cotton floating around. So I've just created a little bit of a, a few clouds there. Okay, we can now proceed onto our range of mountain hills. So I'm going to use exactly the same amount of water into paint, the same wash, and I'm going to really load my brush up here with lots of paint. Now this is very important. What we're going to do is we're going to paint all the mountains. Now one thing I do try and do is not to start the top area of the mountains with a fully loaded brush because what happens is you can end up with a hard line and we don't really want that. So it's a good idea always to start in the middle, work up to the top, down to the bottom, to the left and to the right. Hopefully, the more you can do it, this area with one load of the brush, the better. But as I said earlier, I'm going to use the glazing technique for this exercise. The glazing technique means you apply one application of paint, let it dry, and then you apply a second layer. If you think of double glazing, that might help you remember the, the name of the technique. So I'm now just going to take a little bit of time out just to dry the picture. Right, my mountain range has now dried. 
just before I get on to, to the remainder of the exercise, I'll just tell you a little bit about the brush that I'm using. It's an SAA gold round size 12 brush. These are fabulous brushes. They are sable and synthetic mix. They have the durability of the synthetic aspect to them and they have the lovely soft suppleness of the sables. They're very, very nice brushes. And the paper I'm using is a Claire Fontaine Aquarelle 140 pound knot. So onwards we go. So exactly the same mix of water to paint ratio. This time I'm going to leave the first range of mountains painted just with that first wash and I'm going to start to paint the second and third range of mountains with my wash of paint here. Again, as you can see, I'm painting from the middle to the top to the bottom to the right and to the left as smoothly as you can. What we're trying to achieve here is a look of aerial perspective of depth in distance. So as I did before, I'm going to dry number two and number three. That won't take too long. Okay, so we've done one, two and three. We're now going to finish the third layer of mountains. This is also a very good, this glazing technique as, as I'm using here, is also a very good technique for uh, painting water, especially if you want to paint reflections into water, but you kind of see want the colour of the water to come through. So it's very good for painting reflective light. So I'm going to charge my brush up again with the last and final application of my paint. One thing to remember with watercolour is it always dries lighter. So sometimes what initially goes onto your paper, which it looks really quite strong, it will dry subsequently lighter. So some people are a little bit afraid of the darks. They're afraid of making something too dark, which is a shame because paintings do need a range of light to medium to dark to actually be able to reveal form. I've done a range of hills in blue here, but if I'd painted a, a pear, we all know there's no such thing as a blue pear, but if I'd painted a, a pear in blue paint and I'd got the light and shade correct, we would know it was a pear. So an, a, a, an awareness of tone and being able to practice tone and being able to be to recognize it is very important. As you can see here, we have a, uh, a range of hills in perspective with the sky above, a little bit of light behind just to pu push those forward. And we can see three distinct changes of tone. We've got um, light, medium and dark. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you very much for watching me. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>